Hello and welcome from the Car Race to My Europe 2017. I'm Christina from We Connect and I'm really happy to be with Ian Meggins from NASA at the Johnson Space Center. Thank you for having me. Oh, thank you. Um, as a start, do you mind just introducing yourself and tell us a bit more about your background? Sure. So I am a spacesuit engineer at NASA's Johnson Space Center. And basically what that means is I'm working on developing the uh, next generation spacesuit that we'll use in space at the International Space Station and on any, any other NASA destinations like the Moon or Mars or an asteroid. Yeah, that sounds pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. And it's also what you'll be talking about tomorrow afternoon in your case study. Um, so tell us, how does the design or has the design changed over the past years and what will a spacesuit potentially look like in the future? Sure, so one of the probably most noticeable differences from the designer that we've, we've progressed over the several past several decades is the mobility of the spacesuit. So, the spacesuit that we have now focuses on upper torso mobility, so being able to move your wrists and your shoulders and your arms. Um, going forward, because we're talking about going to the moon or going to Mars, we're trying to incorporate mobility elements into the lower torso, so you can actually move your legs and walk around and pick up objects on the ground. Okay, and how do um, mobility, fit and comfort actually determine the overall performance of a spacesuit? How does that work? So that's huge. I mean, those are the three big factors we're always considering when designing a spacesuit. So mobility is important because uh, if, if the suit can't move as the person needs it to move for the particular task they're doing, uh, it's going to be very difficult for them. Um, for instance, when the astronauts were on the moon uh, doing spacewalks there, they didn't have many mobility features in the suit itself just to try to cut down on the weight. And because of that, they had a very difficult time uh, walking around, picking up moon rocks. I mean, it was t to watch videos on the internet today. It's just it's almost comical. I mean, <laughs> they they would fall over and they literally could not get up without the assistance of their uh, fellow crew members. So we're trying to get away from that, um, make the suits a little bit more mobile. In regards to fit, that's a big problem today because we don't have you know 50 different sizes of suits. We have maybe three sizes of spacesuits, but we have astronauts who range from very, very small to very, very big. So we need to make sure that the, uh, the suit can fit the person very well because if it doesn't fit them well, they're going to move around inside the suit and the joints of the suit are not going to be aligned with the joints of their body. So for instance, your shoulders, like if you flip up your shoulder, shoulders in a suit and the bearing or joint of the shoulder is way out of here on your elbow because you're really, really tiny, you just, you're just not going to be able to move your arms. So we need to make sure that the person is fit well inside the suit. Mm -hmm. uh, finally, with comfort, uh, that's, that's almost obvious. I mean, if you're not comfortable in the suit, if you're in constant pain when you're moving around, that's just, it's not going to be fun and you're not going to do a very good job at whatever you're supposed to be doing. So we have to make sure all of those factors uh, coalesce together and are set up very well so that the astronaut uh, has a good experience in the suit. Apart from the challenges you just mentioned, especially with regards to the sizing issue, uh, what other challenges do you have to overcome during the overall development process? Sure, so one of the biggest problems I would say that we have to address going forward as we send astronauts farther and farther away from the Earth is the mass of the suit. So we really want the suit to be mobile and fit well and be comfortable and that sometimes means the suit is going to be very heavy and very bulky. Um, but we really can't have that happen for suits that we're sending far, far away because it takes a lot of extra fuel to carry all that extra weight. So it's a balance between suit mobility and suit comfort versus suit weight. So that's why NASA is spending a lot of time and money on developing new composite materials and incorporating mm -hmm. those into spacesuits. Um, Traditionally, we've used different types of like fiberglass materials or aluminum or steel, and those are fine and all for a low Earth orbit because it's so close. I mean, it's still in outer space, but it's relatively close compared to Mars. And so we need to find new technologies that are going to enable us to have the same or better performance in the suits while a lot lower mass. Okay. And a bit of a curveful question. <laughs> what do you think or what would you say is the most iconic HMI from the past 50 years? Sure, so, so getting away from spacesuits entirely. Just personally, I feel like uh, touch screens are a pretty big innovation. I mean, that has really revolutionized like airline cockpits, automobiles are moving in that direction. I mean, restaurants have touch screens in them now. So I think for the average everyday person, I mean, what they see are touch screens more often than probably any other HMI innovation that I can think of off the top mm -hmm. of my head. And with regards to that conference, Kaya to my Europe, that's happening at the moment, um, what are your expectations towards that one? 
So what I'm looking for in this conference is being able to understand the challenges that the automotive industry is dealing with and how they're addressing it in regards to HMI. Uh, spacesuits, we are developing new suits for people just as the automotive industry is developing new HMI technologies for people. So it's completely different industries, but there's a lot of overlap. So I'm looking forward to talking to different people, seeing what their challenges are and what they do to address those challenges. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for sharing your insights. Good luck with your case study tomorrow. Yep. And enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you.